What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we need to talk about the banking issues and how the Federal Reserve may have just lied to you, but yet you may not know it. So I want to break this down because banks are going to go under. Just this week we had the Federal Reserve do a stress test, a financial stress test on the banks, on 31 of the biggest banks. Some of those banks included Bank of America, JP Morgan, and also Citi. Now, they also included uh, a credit card company like American Express and also uh, Truist as well. So, the reason why I'm breaking this down today is simple. We were told that there is no issues that the largest banks in the United States would be able to withstand an economic collapse. Now, is this true? Well, Let's go over the notes because a lot of people have been asking me over the past couple of days, is this something that they should be worried about? Because according to CNBC, NBC News, Fox News, Bloomberg, Associated Press, the banks are strong. Well, here's the truth. The Federal Reserve said the banking stress test showed that all 31 banks would be able to absorb losses while being able to maintain the minimum requirement capital levels. However, how true is this? Well, here's what the stress test parameters were. The test assumes a 10% unemployment rate. It assumes a 40% drop in commercial real estate values. And it also includes uh, housing prices to fall by 36%. Okay. Well, here's what we know. Uh, unemployment reaching 10% is highly unlikely, okay? But unemployment reaching 10% is not the only issue. What if we also see, you know, people are making less money, right? They're making less money, so their, their money isn't going as far. Well, that's happening. We are seeing right now that people are working less hours, Yes, they're getting a little bit of a wage increase, but it's not gonna be uh, very much, it'll be very minimal. And let me know down in the comment section below, in the last six months, because we are pretty much to uh, the end of June, but in the last six months, have you received a wage increase? If you haven't, well, that's a problem because we are seeing prices still go up. Yeah, it's concerning. So yes, we aren't going to see a 10% unemployment rate. That would be a huge economic collapse. And I don't see that happening. But that's one of the parameters they went with. Also, 40% drop in commercial real estate values. If you remember back a few weeks ago, or maybe even a month ago, we talked about commercial real estate. We talked about the commercial real estate bubble that has already burst. I mentioned, and I'll continue to mention this, is that by the by Q1 of 2025, the United States has, I believe, $1.2 trillion in commercial real estate loans that have to be refinanced. Businesses aren't going to do it. Not with interest rates where they're currently at. Not with the value of the real estate that they're holding, which has already dropped, in some cases, more than 40%. Here's what's interesting, and I talked about this a while back as well, is that we are seeing large commercial real estate uh, holdings. They are selling, uh, some of which uh, I saw a mall just the other day. Uh, this mall was purchased for, uh, it was over like $50 million, and I believe it sold for less than 10 because nobody wants it. There's no stores in it. So that's an, an example already of a commercial real estate um, you know, building purchase, whatever you want to call it, that is lost more than 40%. I talked about this before, where there's a, a building in, in uh, I believe, San Francisco, um, sold for previously for 300 some million dollars. And I believe the last time it sold, just in the past few months, it sold for $180 million. So almost 50% haircut right there. Yeah, this is happening. Okay, so the Fed using a parameter of a 40% drop in commercial real estate values, well, I think we're already there. 
That's a problem. What about housing prices falling 36%? No, I don't think home prices are going to fall by 36%. I don't think that's going to happen because we have an affordability crisis. We don't have enough homes. And if we are short on affordable homes, then how could we have a, a real estate crisis? Unless people are using all their equity, then paying off credit cards and car loans and student loans and medical debt and going on vacation to you know Cancun and the Bahamas. But if people don't do those things, then we should be fine. Here's a crisis. It's an affordability crisis. People can't afford anything. And so what we are seeing right now, and this is something that I've been seeing for for two years, people are almost asking for help. They, they want roommates. People in their 40s and 50s and 60s are asking for a roommate to help them afford an apartment or a home. It's kind of where we're at. So no, I don't see real estate values and home prices dropping by 36%. I see that as highly unlikely. You know, it still could, but highly unlikely. What I do see happening is this affordability crisis, it worsens. And as it does, people have less money to spend elsewhere. They have less money to spend elsewhere. Businesses are going to see this. They're going to close. They're going to become uh, non-profitable. And well, we'll go down a bigger and deeper spiral. Now, the Fed says this year's stress test uh, would see nearly $685 billion in hypothetical losses. Here's what you need to know. JP Morgan came out and said on, on Thursday or Friday that their losses would be much higher than what the Fed disclosed. Now, why would the Federal Reserve come out and, and disclose numbers uh, for JP Morgan? But JP Morgan comes out and says, no, our losses would be much greater. Probably because the Federal Reserve doesn't want to release the actual numbers. They don't want the the you know every person in the United States to understand and know what uh, issues are coming for the banking industry. But here's the biggest thing. These banks are feeling good about themselves. Citigroup, Bank of America, and JP Morgan, they all increased their payouts to investors. Okay, some are talking stock buybacks. Well, here's the thing. How many people have money in Citigroup, have money in Bank of America, or even JP Morgan? Decent amount, some, those are some of the biggest banks. But here's the thing you need to keep in mind. There's more regional banks. There's more credit unions. There's more uh, financial institutions out there than those uh, three big banks, okay? And I bring this up because if you have money in a regional bank, your regional bank might not be able to withstand a, a stress test. That's one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of regional banks going through the stress test is because they would likely falter. If you see uh, unemployment at 10%, you see um, a drop in real estate values of 40%. For many of these uh, you know, regional banks that have, a, have you know, assets of, you know, let's say five to eight trillion or eight billion dollars, but yet they have commercial real estate debt in the 20s, 30s, 40 billion dollar range, if these these values drop by just you know twenty five percent, in some cases the bank, well the the loss the theoretical loss of those uh, commercial real estate holdings would be greater than the entire uh, company's value. That's a problem. So I wanted to share this with you because honestly I think the Federal Reserve is kind of lying to us, telling us what we want to hear, telling us there's there's no problems. But also, the Federal Reserve is the one that is highly concerned, and so is the Treasury, about if we decided to have a bank run, pull all of our money out of the bank. People have already been discussing that for the past you know, year, year and a half. So I think the reason why the Federal Reserve comes out and says, well, there, there's no issues here. Don't worry, we're strong. Well, I think the reason they're doing that is because they have to. They have to protect the banks. So... We'll see what happens moving forward. The only thing I can tell you right now is what I've told you for the past two or three years. 
<laughs> stay diversified. Have money in a large bank like JP Morgan. Put some money in Bank of America. Have some money, <coughs> excuse me, in some of the regional banks as well. Maybe even a credit union. Maybe even an online bank. Spread your money around. Make sure it's not sitting in one bank because if it is and the bank goes under, yes, you probably are protected by FTIC insurance. However, that could be could mean that your money is going to be tied up for a little bit. So just protect yourself, be aware of what's happening, and you should be perfectly fine. So I will leave you with that. Again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.